So I've got Project Felix opened up and I called this one Snow Globe. Well, it's not entirely a snow globe or even partially. And give this a second to load up. And all this is, is a background image, which you see here, and a sphere. And then on the sphere, I have dropped the default material, this one right here. I can zoom in. No, I can't. Oh, well. Um, it's, uh, um, it's called Distress Glass, I believe. Damaged Glass. Glass Damaged. And you can see that it's got these cracks in it and so forth. Um, and so by default now, and so when you first look at it, if I just maximize this preview screen, it'll give us a fairly accurate view of what it looks like. You see, it looks absolutely nothing like it's really in that image. But now if I create the image base light from this image, and again, to go back over that, we click on our background and then go over to our info panel and then click Create Light from Image. And now this just really goes to show how how big of a difference that this can make. OK, so we see a slight change here in our viewport, but the big change is, is really in the preview and is going to be in the render. So we can see as this starts building up its preview, we can see that it really looks realistic and not not just realistic, it, it really has a fantastic photorealistic quality with the reflections and uh, and the lighting taken from this from this image, um, this background image. So I'm going to, to close Felix because I've rendered this out um, without the image base light and then with the image base light. So we take a look at that. Here is the two. So we see that without that image base light, it it doesn't look very good at all. Um, it just um, just doesn't doesn't fit in, and and very easy. We saw how to make that image base light, and we switch to the the rendered view of that, and it just looks absolutely fantastic. So very easy and straightforward. Again, this is just a sphere with a glass texture dropped over it, a background image added to it, and then um, clicked on the image base light on it to uh, to create this and you've got that fantastic image okay so I just really wanted to show you uh, guys the uh, um, the difference that it makes and uh, and how it can really bring out and uh, create and help to create a, a photographic image a photorealistic type image so now we're going to go and take a look at the next example that I wanted to show you and you can see a little preview picture of it there. And what we're going to do is bring an external 3D model in. And this is, as I said, um, and this um, is from TurboSquid that I got this uh, model. So TurboSquid is a great resource for 3D models. And um, you can sign up for a free account. And there are both free and purchasable models. And you can find a fantastic array of, of even free models. So I've downloaded a... Um, a stylish office chair and we're going to put this um, together, a scene together now, utilizing the texture um, uh, um, workflow that we've learnt and also the uh, using a background image and the image base light from the background image. We're going to go into a little more detail um, with regards to the texture in this example. Okay so I'm back at the main screen for Project Felix. I'm going to create a new project and maximize that. Now then, something that I found with, with Project Felix um, is when you are creating a scene and you're using the background and then automatically setting your ground plane right here to align with, with an image, um, I found a little workflow for this that helps to keep the center of your ground plane um, kind of centered with your with the screen here, centered with your workflow, and I'll go back to to mentioning this because you'll see how this can be important in orienting around your image in just a couple of minutes. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a sphere, and you see it's dropped that right on the center. Okay, now I'm going to go to my library because I want to add a background image. 
and I've got a, a background image of an empty office in here. So I'm going to add that just by clicking on it. Here it is. Oh, it's this one right here, office space. And it's going to apply this as the background image. Okay. Now it's loading that up and it's figured out that it can align this image. As I've said before, not every image it can find the ground plane and align the view to image. Sometimes you have to do it manually, but it's found it in this one. So I'm going to click that. And now what it's done is it's aligned its ground plane to the ground plane of this image. But if I didn't have this sphere in here, the... Um, the center of my ground plane would be off somewhere in the distance. And why does this make it make a, a difference? Well, I'm going to toggle my horizon off and I'm going to go to my dolly cam and I'm going to zoom out a little. Then I'm going to go back into my horizon, toggle that on. And you see these, uh, these, these two options that you have here, the altitude and more importantly, the yaw. Well, if I click my button and move my yaw around, you can see that this is moving my ground plane around from the center and the center is basically located in the center of my workspace. Now if I hadn't dropped this sphere here, the center would be off somewhere to the side. But your would still rotate my ground plane from the center, so it would be rotating from here. So just say I dropped some models on right here in the center of my workspace, but my the center of my ground plane was over here, then when I try to orient around, use this or and orient around, maybe to move my entire scene around a little bit, it's going to it's going to move it, pivoting it from the center point way off in the distance, which is just going to be kind of out of control and you will have all sorts of issues um, trying to move your scene around um, with that. So this is a little trick that I found I've tried it with imported 3D models and it doesn't seem to work. It seems to work best to bring a sphere in, so bring a, a, a primitive that is built into Adobe Felix. Then once you've brought that primitive in, then add your background image and then align your view to that image so you maintain the center of your workspace, the ground plane on your workspace, you maintain that in the center of your workspace. Okay, so we're going to turn that off. Now that I've got that, I can delete this sphere. So I can either press the delete button with the sphere highlighted or click the little garbage can. And now I'm going to bring in my 3D image. And I'm going to bring an outside 3D image. So now instead of going to my assets or libraries, I go to file, import 3D model. And I could also import a background image and an image based like this way. So import 3D model. And I've got this one saved. As I said, this is one that I downloaded from TurboSquid. There it is. And it is massive. Okay, so it's imported it in really, really massive. So the first thing you're going to want to do is kind of fit this so that it works well in your scene. Um, I've already done this a couple of times, so I know that I need to scale it down. So because of... of doing it before I know what my scale needs to be so instead of using the scale tool I'm going to scale it using the uh, using the transform panel so I'm going to scale it all down to 0 0.1 and I was saying something about this um, earlier on is that not all models will import correctly into your scene so we can see first of all this one was way too big and now it's angled, it's rotated the wrong way. So this one, I need to rotate it this way, which is the x-axis. So I'm going to negative 90 um, because it needs to flip this way around. So I'm going to rotate this by negative 90 degrees on the x-axis. And there we go, we've, uh, we've brought that in. Um, so there we can see that when you first bring a, an object in, you may need to play around with it when it's an imported one to get it working. So now I've got my model in here. I'm going to go back and we'll take a look at that horizon thing that I was talking about. 
So now because this has dropped into the center of my workspace and the center of my ground plane is also in the center of my workspace. Now if I use this yaw, you can see that this is moving the whole scene around quite nicely. It's maintaining the proper positioning of my ground plane and no matter which way I turn this, it will look correct. So that's, that's why that was important to get those things aligned up, the center of the ground plane and the center of my first model. Okay, so now I've got my model on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to texture it. So this model, I can see up in my scene panel, this model is made of two separate models. Click on the first one, and this is the main part of the chair. Click on the second one, and this is the legs of the chair. So with the first one selected, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to go to into my libraries and add a fabric onto it. So let's go with the polyester to start off with. So it has loaded that up and now with the legs I'm going to go with the basic metal. And if I maximize my preview screen, I can take a quick look at that. So yeah, that's that looks like it's going to be looking pretty good. Let me just take a, a close look at this. So I'm moving this in and you know what? Although that texture works and it's it's looking okay, that fabric is way, way bigger than what it would be like. The fabric, that fabric would never be that big on a chair or you wouldn't expect it to be. Um, and obviously this particular fabric is meant to be a lot smaller than that. Now as, as Project Felix is a fledgling application, not everything is working right um, all the time in it. Um, but there is a way to get around this, which I'm going to show you right now. So I found that pretty much all of the textures for this um, inside of Project Feel Let's Do This, if I switch to my libraries and um, I've got this leather texture that was from Adobe Stock. Give that a second to load up. Now we can see I've got the same thing. The leather, it's on there, but it's it's kind of looking really huge. The the texture, the, the pores the, of, of the leather would be way smaller. Right, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this texture with a base texture. Could be any base texture. I'm going to switch it with the matte just because it makes it look a little easier. And then I'm going to click on my matte and in my information panel here, I've got all the information about this material. Now, I'm going to need a texture. Well, I found without too much searching, I found a whole bunch of seamless textures, seamless fabric textures. And um, why do you want a seamless texture? Well, a seamless texture is good if you're going to tile it. Now, if I was to add this texture just the way it is now, let's take a look at what that would do. I would go to my information about my texture and next to the base color, I would click to add a picture texture. Then I would open the browser up and I would browse over to it. And let's put that on. Well, here we see we've got exactly the same problem. And the problem is that, yes, the fabric texture is. What we can do now with this seamless texture is we can go ahead and we can create a bigger version of it. So to do this, I'm going to open Photoshop. The document that I'm going to show you that I'm making in Photoshop is a 2000 pixel by 2000 pixel document. I'm not sure exactly what would be the smallest size that I could do um, that would create a good look for this, but um, this is the one I've, I've tried it out with. So first of all, I'm going to make my 2000 by 2000 document. OK, but now I'm also going to open in another document. I'm going to open that image of that material. 
So that was on the desktop, and here it is. Okay, so now that I have this image here, and in Photoshop there's a couple of different ways of going around things, so this is just one way of doing this. I go to Edit, and I go to Define Pattern, and I add this as a pattern. Okay, now that's done, I can close that. Now what I'm going to do is in my layers, I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to fill it with a color, it doesn't matter what color, because I'm going to add a layer to it, and in the layer styles I'm going to add a pattern overlay. And here we can see it has added the pattern that I just made from that fabric. And if it hadn't I could have just oriented by clicking into the patterns and choosing the one. And now you can see that this is why we needed that seamless um, tileable pattern. Um, tileable texture is because now we've got one big huge piece of fabric. Okay, so I'm going to rasterize this layer style. You wouldn't have to, but uh, there's a specific purpose, a specific reason why I'm going to do this. So first of all I'm going to export this as a quick JPEG and I'm going to call this um, fabric large. But also remember the normal maps Remember that we needed a normal map, that kind of, these little grooves, it'll make these little grooves in this fabric stand out. Well, Photoshop has got a built-in way of doing that. I go to Filter, go to 3D, Generate Normal Map. And here we can see that it's created a normal map. I'm going to put this onto a cube wrap so that I can see it a little better. And I'm going to zoom in. So this is a a little dialog box, a whole new window f specifically so I can see what this normal map's going to look like. And I can see as I rotate this, that's looking pretty good. I could mess around with all these different bits and pieces, um, but for right now I'm just going to just going to use it as it brought it in by default. So I'm going to click OK and you see how it's changed it? So I'm going to save this normal map out. So export as a quick JPEG, and I'll call this Fabric Normal Large. Save that out. All right, that's all that we need from you right now, Photoshop. Thank you very much. Let's go back to our Project Felix. Okay, so now let's change that out with our Fabric Large texture, and aha, now we're getting somewhere. Now that looks like real fabric. It looks the right size that it should be. Okay, now that I've done that, let me add my normal map. And we see it's changed it a little bit. Now, obviously because this texture, the grooves in this are quite small, you don't see too much of a difference, but each little thing can make something look a little more photorealistic. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my roughness up a little bit and the metallicness a little bit and there I don't have a specific for this this you really just play with until you get the look that feels right to you okay so to to kind of give me a little bit more of an idea of what this is looking like I'm gonna to go to my scene panel click on my scene and I'm gonna rotate my light as I rotate it, I can see that it's moving some shadows in some different parts and some light in other parts, and that's looking pretty good. Now with this background, I could create a light from this image. In fact, I'm going to do that. So I click on the button and it's creating a light from the image. However, the light in this scene is very close to the default light that loaded up with Project Felix. So you you see there isn't that much difference. So I'm going to go into Adjust Light. I'm going to set it so I can rotate this one as well. I'm going to increase the lightness on it. I'm going to drop... No, I'm going to keep the intensity there so I can keep some of the shadows on that normal map looking pretty good. And then I'm going to zoom out and voila, we have our seat. So that's looking pretty good. It fits into the scene and it's textured up nicely. 
and we've learnt a way to get around the textures being a, a little bit funky and uh, figured out a way of doing our textures the right way. And you could do that with any texture. I mean, I just found that fabric one. But if you look for um, seamless metal textures, seamless, all kinds of anything you want, there is tons and tons of them on the web. So you can use that same workflow that I just showed you and uh, adapt it to all different kinds of textures. OK, so the next thing I'm going to do now is we are going to attempt to um, clone, not clone, but copy and paste this. So I want to set up a scene now with three of these chairs. First of all, I am going to save this because sometimes it has a tendency to freeze. I won't say it has a tendency, I'll say a few times it has frozen. So I'm going to call this, yeah, I'm going to call this three chair test. And this saves out a fairly big um, file size because it's got all those three. It's got the 3D objects as well as the background object and then all the other information in it. So these are pretty, pretty hefty size files. OK, so now that that's done, I'm going to select my image and I'm going to go up and go to copy. Now, when I go to paste, I see two things, paste and paste as instance. Well, I'm going to paste this. What paste as instance does? is it pastes a copy with all of the same attributes as the previous one. So for instance, if I paste as an instance and then change the fabric on one of them, it will change it on all of them. And I don't want it to do that, so I'm just going to go with the regular paste. So I'll give that a second, and there we go. I've got my second chair. So with my second chair, I'm going to move it around a little and then I'm going to paste another one and there we go okay it didn't freeze that's great okay I'm going to go to my first chair move it So I'm just I'm just orienting my my chairs. So this is just you can do this to just whatever looks good for you. So now I've got these three chairs. Okay. Now let's take a quick look again at our horizon and our yaw. Now that I've got three chairs there, now you'll really see why being able to pivot around this center point is important. So imagine if this center point here depicted with this blue and, and red um, line, if they were off onto the distance here, then this would be rotating, pivoting on there. So even just a tiny, tiny movement in the yaw would throw these way off the screen. So this is why it's good to have it all lined up. OK, now I've got those lined up kind of OK. I'm going to move my scene just a little bit okay now what I'm going to do is change the color on some of these so to do that I'm going to open up one of my chairs I'm going to open up this that says the seat and I'm going to go into the material and it says no material selected so I'm going to Let's see now what I need to do. First of all, I'm going to try it this way. I'm going to remove that material. Then with the seat selected, I'm going to add that base material. Go into that base material. Just do the same setup as we did before. Add the fabric to it. And add the normal to it. Now, actually, I didn't need to add the fabric to it because I'm going to change the color of it. So clicked on the color picker. Gonna change the color of this one to a you know what, just for the sake of, of showing it in this, I'm going to change it to a really bright red. I'm gonna to go to my next one. See which one is this. That one I'm gonna keep the same. It's the one on this side I want to do. Gonna to go to this one. 
and switch out. Now no, notice when I copied and pasted these, they had the material on them. But when I went into the material, it, it wasn't actually there. Oh, it is on this one. Okay, all right. Well, on the bottom one it wasn't, and on this one it is. Um, just probably, again, one of the teething problems with, with Project Felix. So with this one, I'm going to click on the color picker and going to change it to a bright green. So now we have our three color schemes for our chair. We've got the brown, the red, and the green. Um, so you see that it was actually pretty straightforward. I wouldn't say it was, you know, the most simple thing, but with just a little bit of finagling, um, I've been able to get these chairs in here, get the background, create the background lighting, bring a texture on, um, create my own texture, um, add some attributes to that texture and change the colour of it. So now if, uh, if my customer had made this chair and wanted to see it in these particular colours, we're good to go. And now I could export it out and render it. Now we're going to render this out and take a look and see what it looks like after we've rendered it. So I'm going to start rendering. I'm going to render this on medium. I'm going to call it three chairs test. And I will see you guys when this render gets finished. And we're back with that render done. How long did that take? It took about 25 minutes. And that was on medium, so not too bad. Now, I would say that that for realism, that uh, fabric is a bit too shiny, which is the roughness. So I turned the roughness down a little bit too much. But um, for this demonstration, it does look pretty cool because you see how that light that I've created from the background has bounced off these reflective surfaces and, and not on the other surfaces. And there's a very uh, um, kind of kind of fairly small um, shadowing. I had boosted the light up a little bit, um, but we still can see uh, kind of an, what would be called an area shadow underneath these. So instead of a, a hard shadow, which is a shadow that kind of looks exactly like the surface of the um, 3D object, we've got a, a, a surface shadow or an area shadow, which is a whole patch of shadow. But that looks that looks really good. So we've brought in a model. We oriented this model because uh, it didn't come in and fit in exactly the way we wanted it to. And then we put the textures on and we made our own texture because the other textures were on this particular model were showing up too big. So we were able to fix that by making our own texture very easily in Photoshop. And then we've added it on, changed the color, rendered it out, and we've got our scene ready to go. And the good thing, of course, with this as well, is that we could move around. We could um, just say now that uh, we were making a website and uh, it was showing off these chairs. Well, uh, we could have this one particular render here with all three of the chairs. Then we could have another render of a close-up of each of the chairs. Maybe you click on one of the chairs and a light box opens in your website and shows off um, one of those chairs in that particular color. So we could do something like that. And because these are 3D models, we can pose them in any area that we want to. We could try them in different backgrounds, different lightings, um, so that we could get um, the effect of this chair in all different environments. Now that we've done that, we've gone over um, the basics and some of the more uh, intricate parts of Project Felix. In our next video, um, which will be in the next article, we'll be bringing Project Fuse into a design workflow. Then what we're going to do is then we're going to bring Project Felix into an Adobe Muse workflow. Thank you guys and hope you've really enjoyed this Project Felix as much as I've enjoyed showing it to you.